Hey guys and welcome to this brand new video. Today we're going to talk about the performance of my depot in the month of March 2022 and we can see that March has been a rather nice month and a rather solid performance month. If you are new to my channel welcome and please consider subscribing or leaving a like thumbs up or thumbs down if you enjoyed the video if you already know my channel then welcome back to KNTV and with that said let's go straight into the report so first of all that report is to large parts in German but that does not matter because I'm based in Germany and as you can see here it's from the 1st of March to the 31st of March 2022. The best way to see the my opinion because Interactive Brokers gives you the opportunity to list uh, all kinds of information is position and market to market profits so given and losses. Let's start with Canadian dollars so those stocks I, I own in Canadian dollars and we started the month with 60 shares in Canadian National Railway and we got assigned 100 additional shares at the price of 100 65 dollars and now we have a profit in the month of March of 900 around 900 bucks if we take a look at Canadian Pacific we can see I bought one new share this is due to the dividend I received in Canadian dollars so Canadian Pacific said they're gonna pay me a dividend and so did Canadian National and if a company is about to tell me that they pay me dividend I always buy the stock if that's possible. If we take a look at ASML so the stocks I own in euros we can see I bought 25 additional stocks it's the same with Louis Vuitton as you can see I added 30 new stocks I cancelled that order so minus 10 plus 10 is obviously zero so all in all bought 30 new stocks um totally fine with the stock i actually hope it will plummet more same with asml so i can increase my position and as of today today is april 7 it looks like that there's going to be uh, another correction in that correction that we have right now as i've said i entered a position in hermes the first one on the 17th and I added six new shares and so in total we're owning 10 shares in a mass. As you can see I sold out all of my American Tower shares and this is due to the fact that from now on I'm only going to be long in two ETFs which is once the TQQQ Pro shares ETF and here's one really interesting thing so I bought a call with the strike price of 43 and uh, bought into that company or into that ETF to be honest and as you will see in a second for some reason if I take a look at my option trades I can see that that call looks like minus like as if I lost a lot of money but actually I made a lot of money so I don't quite get why that is the way so if any one of you knows why interactive broker is having that way of showing pluses and losses please let me know that would be really really interesting to know and so and these two I got assigned because I sold cash secure puts on DTQQQ and I will continue to do that I did a really short trade in Tesla and well did not turn out to be a good trade I lost 50 bucks with that but it's all right and finally i also sold all my remaining shares in wetsco it's again due to the fact that i'm going to be investing into the t qqq and u pro from now on all through wetsco is actually listed in the s p mid so s p 600 or 400 on cash so mid-sized stocks and i continue to believe that wetsco is a really really good stock um, a bit thinking about maybe adding a few stocks that are invested in the S&P midsize, like for example Wetsco, like for example Replogen, because I'm invested in all the big companies with the TQQQ, but a company like Wetsco is really really good. If we take a look at my option trades, we can see that I made quite a solid performance here in with these Canadian stocks. I love that. 
or cash secure boost. That's a really nice thing if you have cash and then you write cash secure boost. Then I'm still long all of these trades. The thing is, they look better here than they are right now because actually in almost all of these trades, I'm still minus a hell lot of money, which is rather sad. Then I made a trade in British American Tobacco. So I bought call options. Unfortunately, it did not work out the way I wanted it to work. And I have to admit that I actually should not have done that trade because the spreads for British American Tobacco in the options are way too large and I shouldn't have done that. Same here with GLD. Yeah, that was a really stupid trade, but well, that's the way it is. As you can see, there are a few other trades I did in the SPXL. As you can also see a lot of trades in the TQQQ and UPRO. So all of these UPRO, TQQQ and SPXL are cash secure. The other trades are mainly long calls. I am so for example with Stratis, Visa, Spy, IC, Amart, um, Cloudflare. These are all long calls. So they expire all in 2024 and I hope till then they will be worth a hell lot of money. The only thing I would love to mention is as I said earlier is that call. So I don't know why they show here minus 8,000 or minus 10,000 depending on which number you take. I don't quite get that. So again, if someone knows it, I would be very happy if you can explain that to me. And I uh, bought a few VIX options. So VIX calls um, will continue doing that from now on. And that is mainly to the fact it's simply a hatch. So I'm going to spend around a quarter, um, around half a percent of my portfolio every month on VIX options and the next time I'll go from 50 to 70 because they are even further out of the money and it's basically just a hedge if for some reason the market is going to crash out of nowhere and the VIX is going to go up massively these options obviously explode in value this is basically just a way to hedge me against a massive sell-off in the market because the problem with these leveraged ETFs like UPRO, SPXL and TQQQ is obviously, as you can see up here, they give you a really solid performance when it comes to gains. So over 16,000 in gains, but they also give you lots of losses if they go down the road. All in all, I made $23,817 in profit but i have to admit i'm still long over a hundred thirty thousand dollars in cash and this continues to be due to the fact that i'm still waiting for the probability of a rather large investment that i'm doing and for that i need that money if I know more about that investment, that money will all be invested into UPRO and TQQQ. Finally, let's take a look at dividends. So I cashed in around $140 in dividends from Tractor Supply, S&P Global and Estilo Dare. I won't receive any of these dividends in the future because I'm not a shareholder of these companies anymore. That has nothing to do with the fact that I don't think these companies are really, really good. I think all of these three companies are extraordinary companies, but for the United States, I want to continue my investment in the UPRO ETF and the TQQQ ETF. And as you can see here, I'm expecting around 60 Canadian dollars of dividends to come in the month of April. And that's the reason why I bought that new share in Canadian Pacific. All in all, that's it. That was my performance in the month of March 2022. Let's see how the road goes on from here. Because as you all know nowadays with the Fed hiking rates, it's all a bit a rather tough time. And how I personally hedge against recession, hedge against a decline in the stock market and why you should consider hedging as well especially if you are like myself invested in these leveraged etfs wait till sunday and i'll explain you how you do that and why you should do that with that said see you soon guys bye